Although the angels in Hasbin Hotel would like everyone to believe that heaven and hell are different, there are more similarities than someone might realize. Sinners may wind up in hell, living an entire existence of violence and corruption, but they aren't the only ones who have blood on their hands. In fear of uprisings, the High Seraphim of Heaven condones a secret militia of angels to enter hell each year. Led by the first man, Adam, the exorcists launch an extermination against sinners, lowering their population and enforcing their oppression. The massive loss of lives has caught the attention of Hell's princess, Charlie, who makes a plan that directly opposes Sarah and Adam. In today's video, we'll discuss whether Sarah would take a tremendous risk to maintain her power status in heaven. And we can't doubt ourselves or worry about the fates of demons when we have our own souls to protect. Please. Charlie creates the has Hotel with the help of her girlfriend, Vaggy, and their associate, Alistair. Throughout the first season, the three work alongside the other hotel residents to find a more productive way to prevent further conflicts between heaven and hell. Charlie believes that sinners deserve a second chance and that she could help them redeem their souls. She assists characters like Angel Dust and Serpentius to reshape their views of the world. Eventually, they would rather spend their free time helping their friends than partaking in their old vices. In Welcome to Heaven, Charlie takes her plans to the top, attending a meeting with Sarah and the other angels to present them with proof that redemption is possible for sinners. The council watches as Angel Dust helps care for Nifty by preventing her from stealing and protecting her from Valentino. However, despite him completing the checklist provided by Adam, the angels can't determine why his soul hasn't ascended to heaven. In a horrifying twist, Charlie realizes that Sarah and the others don't know what a human must do to enter heaven. She advocates for Angel Dust alongside the other Seraphim, Emily, but it only causes a confrontation between her and Adam. When the truth about the exterminations becomes revealed to the other angels, Sarah Sarah calls the meeting to a close, forcing Charlie and Vaggy back to hell, allowing the extermination to continue on schedule. Although Heaven doesn't believe in redemption, Charlie does everything to protect her new home. Her actions range from dealing with Alistair to recruiting an army of cannibals to help her defend the hotel. Her newfound friends also stand up to fight, with Angel Dust, Serpentius, Husk, and Nifty taking the initiative to fortify the hotel while Charlie's away. The four have gone through her trust-building exercises, followed her rules, and worked on bettering themselves throughout the season. It's not a stretch to assume the has Hotel has become a home to each of them, which explains why they're so eager to risk their lives protecting it. He was selfless, he stopped Nifty from stealing, and he stuck it to that Mothman! Uh. Throughout the series, Angel Dust remains the poster child for the has Hotel. As the first resident, all eyes are on him as Heaven and Hell wait to see if he's redeemable. However, the series provides a pleasant plot twist after Serpentius's sudden death and the show must go on. Serpentius gives his life protecting his friends by attacking Adam head-on. Although he knows the risk, Pentius still tries to hold off Adam. Unfortunately, Adam is more powerful than anticipated and defeats Pentius with a snap of his fingers. Charlie and the others are horrified to see Serpentius lose. They honor his life by keeping a portrait of him for the rebuilt hotel. To say their goodbyes, they give his portrait a respectful salute to honor his sacrifice. However, fans of has Hotel don't have to share the same goodbye to their favorite snake-themed sinner as he ascends to heaven with a new angelic appearance. In a surprising turn of events, Serpentius becomes the first sinner to redeem themselves and become an angel. Although everyone expected Angel Dust to make that significant change, Serpentius's ascension is well-deserved. He joins the hotel when Vox sends him as a double agent in Radio Killed the Video Star. He may work for Alistair's enemy, but Serpentius gives his all into participating in Charlie's exercises and training. When he's outed as an enemy by Angel Dust, he accepts Charlie's forgiveness and learns to give a genuine apology. Unlike most sinners in hell, Serpentius believes he can have a second chance, so he makes the most out of living at the hotel. Please, you've got to get me out of here! I can't believe we thought you could handle even something this simple. Despite his eagerness to redeem himself, adjusting to his new life is a struggle for Serpentius. In Scrambled Eggs, he must learn to trust the other hotel residents. He also gives up his creative outlet of creating weapons and allows Vaggy to take away his beloved minions. The latter situation brings Serpentius to tears, but he believes it's worth staying with Charlie. Throughout the series, he learns to bond with the others, befriending Angel Dust and Husk. He also tries pursuing love when he reunites with his former rival, Cherry Bomb, in Welcome to Heaven. While most people in Hell pursue relationships for straightforward reasons, Serpentius genuinely feels for Cherry. He expresses interest in dressing nicer when he learns they're going out, wants to buy her drinks, and tries numerous times to express how he feels about her. Although this happens subtly enough to be overshadowed by the main plot, Serpentius works hard to redeem himself. 
His final act of righteousness was when he gave his life to save his friends. Serpentius appears before Sarah and Emily when he enters heaven. Emily has always supported the Hasbin Hotel and her smile upon seeing Pentius is genuine. However, Sarah can't hide her displeasure, as an expression of either horror or disgust takes her expression. In the second season, Sarah will likely express her unhappiness by hiding Serpentius from the other angels or trying to remove him from heaven entirely. Sarah worries about heaven becoming corrupted as the angels have a centuries-old system in place. In Overture, we see the silhouettes of elder angels as they help create humanity. Among them is Sarah, marking her as one of the oldest entities in the series thus far. She was also one of the angels who cast Lucifer from heaven after he tempted Eve with the apple. Lucifer's greatest sin was tampering with the other angels' plans and questioning why they wanted humans to exist without free will. In the narrative, Sarah's actions are the greater evil. Well, if it isn't my arch nemesis, have you come to meet your fate in battle, Cherry Bomb? In the modern day, Sarah is still willing to punish anyone who questions Heaven's grand plan. Her threats have no limits as she tells Emily to stop asking questions and the show must go on, or else she could end up as a fallen angel like Lucifer. Since Sarah doesn't like her fellow Seraphim questioning how she runs heaven, Serpentius's entire presence will seem like a threat. Not only is he changing how human souls can enter heaven, but he's also proving that sinners deserve more than harsh retribution and criticism. It also calls her recently exposed exterminations into question. Sarah claims the exterminations are to quell hell's overpopulation crisis, but allowing the exorcist to kill sinners is now causing countless human souls good enough to enter heaven after bettering themselves in hell to be lost. Sarah justifies her murderous intent because she fears an uprising in hell. However, if more angels share Emily's opinions about redeeming souls, Sarah may have an uprising on her doorstep. Serpentius's existence in hell could call her leadership into question, forcing the other elder angels to step in and force her from the throne. Sarah does have the exorcists following her orders, meaning she has a small army of battle-ready angels if she wants to engage in a civil war for her leadership. Fortunately, Sarah is a leader who chooses to handle problems covertly. She doesn't want the angels in heaven to know when trouble arises because their afterlives are supposed to feel perfect. The mentality she has is that heaven can't make mistakes and must maintain a flawless image. To her, Serpentius may feel like a stain on the sterling reputation preserved for centuries. I never would have agreed to your yearly activities if I thought it would bring trouble to our doorstep. Keeping heaven safe was my only reason for allowing it. No matter how Sarah approaches the complicated situation with Serpentius, her leadership becomes at risk. His mere existence is enough to question everything Heaven knows about human souls and how they operate. It will also become more difficult to excuse the actions of Loot and the Exorcists, now that everyone has undeniable proof that sinners are capable of goodness. While Sarah can fight for her right to continue ruling in the second season, she's more likely to handle Serpentius as quietly as possible by forcing him out from Heaven. Whether or not a soul in Hell can be redeemed into the heavenly realm by means of this has been hotel. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads. I'm sorry, but this court finds that there is no evidence souls in hell can be redeemed.